Hello and welcome to our functions and graphs topic. This is going to be example 10 in the end, a wee introduction to the idea of asymptotes, first of all, and then we'll get into one of the examples. So what are asymptotes? You might have come across the idea. An asymptote is involved when there's a break in drawing a graph. Okay, And asymptotes themselves don't exist, they're imaginary but it certainly affects the behaviour of the curve. So we define an asymptote as an imaginary straight line to which a curve approaches as x or y get large or small. So for instance, in the function y equals 1 over x, that's a reciprocal function because as x gets larger, y gets smaller. Okay, uh, If you think about it, the 1, 1 would be a point on the line. Um, but as x gets very large, so if x was 10, then the y coordinate would be 1 tenth. Okay. Um, as x is 100, y would be 100. But as x as gets very large, the y coordinate, the curve gets very close to the x axis, but never actually touches it. It, it tends towards it, but doesn't ever touch it or certainly cross it at that point. It's a behaviour as it tends towards. And similarly, at the top here, uh, you can see the curve will tend towards the y-axis, but never actually uh, get to it. Okay, um, So we're really talking about very large values of x and y. And if we can find a, 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 an imaginary line that these functions tend to, then these are asymptotes. And we tend to draw them as dotted lines. And so in this case here, I would draw a dotted line along the x-axis and a dotted line along the y-axis. We not have an arrow at the end of it. And that would be an indication of the fact that there are two asymptotes that exist in this particular function. There's a vertical asymptote. In this case, the equation is uh, x equals 0. So, and there's a horizontal one, uh, which is the equation y equals 0. But our asymptotes will have a, a unique uh, equation depending on the function. And we'll have a look at that later on. Some functions don't have a horizontal asymptote. Their gradient is not 0. Uh, the gradient would be positive or negative. It would be sloping at some angle from the horizontal. And we call these oblique asymptotes. And we'll have a look again at those natures uh, later on. So just a little uh, investigation or a, a, a picture, let's bring up a few um, functions that have asymptotes on it using Desmos, a great little tool here. So here's the first example. I've kept the sliders up on the left hand side. Uh, if you look at the top left, the function that I've defined here is y equals m times x minus a over x minus b. So we've got uh, order one on the numerator and denominator, two linear functions. And what we can see is that there's a vertical and a horizontal asymptote, and they're not on the axes, they're dependent on the values of a and b. So if I change a, which is the top value, you'll notice that that doesn't change the the, the asymptotes, that changes the uh, some of the, the points on the graph, it, get, it gets closer and closer, you see, to that point of intersection. So that doesn't seem to change the asymptote, that's interesting. Uh, what does change one of the asymptotes? Well, let's look at B. Does changing that change it? Well, yeah, that seems to change the position of the vertical asymptote. And that kind of makes sense because remember, one of the problems we have with a function is when the denominator is zero. We can't have x minus B equal to zero. Okay, So wherever the value of B is, so in this case, let's make it three. When B is three, uh, x, you'll notice that here, at the point 3, there is no value. Okay, And so the function uh, stops just before x equals 3 and starts just after x equals 3. And therefore, we can determine one of the asymptotes just by studying the denominator of the function. Okay, What about the horizontal asymptote? Is there anything that that changes that. Well, in this particular case, well, let's have a look and see. It looks like the multiplier does. And that kind of makes sense a little bit from our understanding of, of graphs, um, that it multiplies certain coordinates. So the multiplier m does change the 
horizontal asymptote in this case. Do you notice that depending on some values, the whole graph flips around, which is quite interesting. Uh, and we'll talk about that at another point as well. So there are things that determine an asymptote and things that don't. Let's have a look at another graph. I like this one here. Just to remind you that um, it, you can have more than one vertical asymptote but you can't get more than one horizontal or oblique asymptote okay so remember the the idea of where the vertical asymptotes occur they occur when the denominator can't it, you know, is zero effectively when we can't actually work out a, a y coordinate okay and in this case here because there are two linear functions in my denominator there's going to be two possible values when the denominator is zero at b and indeed c so if we change c to negative seven you can see negative seven here uh, if I zoom it in negative seven has a, has no uh, y coordinate as an asymptote and when c what uh, so when b where's b b is four so yep on x equals four there's no value there's an asymptote so we know that the denominator constant terms well, are going to be affecting the the y uh, the vertical asymptotes. What affects the, the the this one here? Well, this one is an interesting one because it's uh, there's an order one in the top and order two in the bottom. The asymptote's always going to be the x-axis. So even changing m, okay, doesn't change the uh, the horizontal asymptote. And we'll again talk a wee bit more about that as we get on in the examples. I just wanted this kind of video to be about just learning about them okay and here's uh, the last function uh, I'm going to have a look at just now and that's got one of these sloping asymptotes called oblique asymptotes and look at the function on the left hand side here it's actually what we might call a, a, a top heavy or an improper function all of these fraction functions we call rational functions but you can see here there's two linear terms multiplying on the numerator and that's the kind of ingredients for uh, an oblique asymptote. We've still got one vertical asymptote. Can you spot why that is or where it's going to happen? It's going to happen dependent on x minus c, this value of c. And as we move c, of course, it's going to move the vertical asymptote left or right because that's the point where there's no y coordinate because we can't calculate dividing by zero. It, what affects the slope of the um uh, the, the the asymptote well uh, is there if we can move things around you'll notice that uh, the, the a one of the the numbers in the top tends to change the the y-intercept that's interesting what about b well b does the same it changes the y-intercept that's not affecting the slope but let's have a look at the multiplier here well yeah the multiplier seems to affect it just like the gradient uh, would be on a, a straight line okay it's not exactly the same it doesn't mean the gradient is 0 0.8 um, but the the same idea is that there are different things that affect the slopes of the line so that's just this is just a video to say these are what asymptotes are and the shape of the function will depend on how many asymptotes there are and what might where they might be and we're going to look at being able to anticipate to study these asymptotes so that we can sketch graphs with asymptotes without needing uh, the wonder of Desmos to help us. OK, so uh, let's go on. In fact, let's just we'll call it quits here. All right. And the next video will be example 10, looking at vertical asymptotes, because I think you need to go uh, and grab yourself a wee drink and I'll go and get a cup of tea and we'll come back for uh, example 10. OK, hope that's been helpful.